Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I have a treat for you guys. Not so much a treat for me, unfortunately. This 72 volt Amore battery has gone bad. I went to ride the bike and nothing happened. I checked it, it won't discharge, it won't charge, it's locked up. So let's try to uncover the problems. Let's see if we can fix it here on Tackle That. <music> Before we get started, there are two things I want you to know. Amorg is an amazing company. They actually replaced this battery, no questions asked. So this is just the spare bad battery that I have. And I don't wanna let all these resources go to waste. So I do wanna to try to repair this battery, even though it won't have the capacity probably that it did when it was new. Uh, but either way, we can either repair it or use the good cells in some other project. The other thing is, this is not professional advice. This is do your own research. And if you are unsure about what you are doing with your battery, please seek professional advice. All right, let's get this thing opened up. I've taken a few of these apart and what I do know is where these wires are, are usually where the BMS is. So the BMS is gonna be kind of on this front side of the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these edges and see if we can start revealing some of these cells. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a picture of these specs so I have them stored in case I ever have to reference any of these in the future. Just as suspected, we got this fiberglass kind of casing and things should come apart right at the seams. Start seeing that BMS in there. Aha, very nice. So there's the BMS nicely mounted to the front of this battery. Let's get these other sides off here. just like peeling a banana. Now I don't want to tear apart more than I have to. We really need to get to the balancing leads and then we can test the voltages of each group. While we're here, let's talk about accessing the BMS via Bluetooth. You are gonna connect your charger up. That is gonna activate the Bluetooth because most of the time, you hear that beep? Most of the time when the BMS is in protection, you can't access the uh, Bluetooth via your app. So you have to plug it in, you're gonna get a beep, and now we should be able to access it on our phone. And there is an Ant BMS app. We're gonna go to the device list. We're gonna select this BMS, and it's gonna load up just like this. So as we scroll through and see what's going on here, I can already see that we have protection info and warning info. Uh, we got a low voltage warning and let's go down to our actual cells and we can see, woo, we actually have 
1, group 9, we have group 11, we have group 10, we have group 6, and group 8, all under voltage. So that actually is more than I was suspecting. When this battery went bad on me, I let it sit around for a few more months and that's always a bad idea. You wanna catch this early, that way your voltages are higher and you can give it a charge sooner and the, the degradation of the cells won't be as bad. So when I'm actually looking at this, we're gonna to attempt to charge these groups up, but they might be more damaged and I'm probably looking at a pack that maybe has half its capacity or less. Good news is there's a whole bunch of groups that are still within safe voltage, so there are still a lot of cells we could salvage from this pack if we want to. All right, so I'm gonna take a screenshot so we know exactly what cells and what voltage is. Let's go ahead and pinpoint these, find, use the voltage meter, and uh, we'll figure out which cells are low, and then we'll give them a charge. All right, let's go ahead and take some of those green stuff off. It is very sticky. Big old copper tabs in the back there. You want to make sure you don't cut into any of these small uh, balancing leads. They are pretty delicate. As you can see, the assembly is pretty awesome on these things, really built well. So the fact that this battery pack died is not a morgue's fault. These are lichen cells. They are budget friendly cells, but they are known to fail uh, within a year. So that's why I think the company has actually moved to EV cells instead of the lichen cells because they were having some issues with these. Let's take a look and see if we can find some of these bad groups. Let's poke around with our voltage meter. We want to find the start and end of one group because if you start measuring voltages across many groups, um, you're not gonna have an accurate voltage. So you wanna just make sure you're on each side of the battery. So I'm already starting to poke around with the voltages with my voltmeter. And let me show you this one is 0.75, so this group here, 0.75 voltage, is not very good at all. 1.38, and I'm writing the voltages on these groups as I go. The, the worst thing I'm seeing is this one actually has zero or 0.01 voltage, so this group is gonna be toast, unfortunately. 0.34 on this group. 3.21, 3.3, So we've kind of identified our area here, a couple bad groups. Let's go ahead and check the rest. We've got them all labeled now. We know which groups we need to hit with the charger. So what you're gonna need is a variable power supply and we're gonna get our positive and negative, and we're gonna connect that to each one of these groups. We're gonna give it a nice slow charge. So I'm gonna charge it up to about 3.2 volts. 
that kind of match all the rest. And then we're gonna activate the balancer in the BMS and hopefully bring this whole pack to life. Another big disclaimer, when you're charging these, make sure you're in a safe location. You have a fire extinguisher handy, even though if these have thermal runaway, a fire extinguisher won't do anything. You need to fully submerge this battery in water to get anything to stop. So we're gonna have a big bucket outside just in case anything happens and I can wheel this whole uh, bench outside and just push it into the bucket. When you're dealing with lithium batteries, you need to be extra cautious. Even if we bring this battery pack back to life, it still poses a threat, and you need to always make sure you consider that when you're charging and discharging this battery from now on. All right, perfect. This group is charged up to 3.2 volts, so we're good there. We're gonna move on to the next group. Let's get this guy. All right, always keep your um, amperage low and then you can crank it up after you connect. Let's see. Just wanna get about a half an amp going into that one. And we can see the voltage is already coming up. It wanted a charge really bad. Got some bad news. This group seven is reading 10 volts on the BMS. I have no idea why but it won't even go over one volt. I've been charging this for a few hours now and uh, it is not holding a charge. So this was the group of cells that I went out with the voltmeter read zero volts, but I was thinking maybe something was loose or whatever, but no, this whole group of 10 cells is definitely toast. So the good news though, is the rest of the cells were able to charge up um, everything is two and a half volts or higher, but uh, unfortunately that group's gonna need to be replaced. So what I'll do is I'm gonna order 10 cells. We'll split this apart. We'll fix those 10 cells, put it all back together, and I think we'll have a, a nice working battery pack. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for joining. Make sure you subscribe so uh, you don't miss the video where we replace those cells and hopefully get this battery pack back in business. I can't fault a morgue, uh, the assembly company uh, for the Lishan cells. Uh, they made good and they shipped me a new battery right away. So they have excellent customer service and I highly recommend them. I have a lot of their batteries. Matter of fact, the first battery to die on me was an Electro & Co, which was very expensive, uh, made by Eon Lithium. So thanks again and we'll see you on the next one.